Another thing I want to tell you is how you can actually um, untangle things. For example, suppose I have something like this. Oh, um, take a number. Think of your favorite number. Was it three? <laughs> All right, so you have three. Now suppose I want to add something to three to make that equal zero. What should I add? Well, what we add is what's called the additive inverse. And it's just the negative of three, or also known as negative three. So in fact, the additive inverse is, is just the negative of a number. Now you've got to be a little bit careful, because what's the additive inverse? And I'll talk about this in a bit, but like of negative four. What do you have to add to negative four to make it zero? Well, here, it's actually four, or negative negative four. So an additive inverse is the number you have to add to somebody to make the result equal to zero. You can do this with respect to multiplication, too. You can talk about multiplicative inverses. For example, 7. What do I have to multiply 7 by in order to make it equal to 1? Well, the answer is 1 over 7. It's the reciprocal. So that's, that's actually not bad at all. For example, suppose I had like, uh, oh, 1 half. What do I have to multiply 1 half by in order to make it equal to 1? Okay, that's going to be the multiplicative inverse, which in this case would be 2. So those are pretty easy to find as well. Now, the operations of multiplication and addition satisfy a lot of great properties. I want to tell you about some of them really fast because they'll be useful. For example, they're commutative. That means it doesn't make a difference if you have 7 plus 3 or 3 plus 7. Always gives you the same answer. Let me show you. 7 plus 3, well, that equals 10. But if I did it in the other order, 3 plus 7, that still equals 10. This is also true with multiplication. Take 2 times 5. That equals 10. And that's the same thing as 5 times 2. So order does not make a difference. If you have two things and you're adding them together, it doesn't make a difference how you do the operation. That's called commutative. And that's going to be a real fun one. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh, I love commutative. It's so much fun. Now, there's also a property called associativity. Now, associativity is sort of a cool one. Because what associativity says is if I have a whole bunch of plus signs there, add it up any way you want. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose I wrote this. 1 plus 2 plus 3. What does that mean? Does that mean first take? 2 and 3, add them together, and then add 1? Or does it mean take 1 and 2, add them together, and then add 3? Associativity says, you know what? It's your choice. Whatever you want's great. Because it says that if you want to group it like this, that's the exact same way as first doing the first two terms and grouping like this. Let's check. 2 plus 3, if I add them together, I get 5. And that gives me then a 6. And on this side, here I have a 3 plus 3. And even though I have a different intermediate step, all correct roads lead to the correct answer. So that's what associativity is. And that's also true with multiplication. If I have 2 times 3 times, let's say, 4, it doesn't make a difference what order I do it in. I could say 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4 is 24. Or I could say 3 times 4, which is 12 times 2 is 24. So associativity is a really, really great one. Now, now I want to end with telling you about one of my favorite things in the world, zero. I love zero. I'm going to be coming back to zero because this is all I've got. <laughs> it's basically zero, which gives you a sense of how things are going with me. But anyway, back to you. Zero is great because if you take any number, t tell me your favorite number. Was it 17? I knew it. If you multiply it by zero, you get zero. And this is true no matter what the number you put here is. Any number you want, if you want to kill it off, just multiply it by 0, and it will all become 0. It's fantastic. There's no other number like 0. It's true. Now, there's a little downside to this, though. There's a downside. And the downside is there will be no dividing by 0. That's right. You've heard me. There will be no dividing by 0. And let me show you why. Suppose I take 14, and I divide it by 2. Well, if you think about that, that's 7. And why is it 7? It's 7 because 2 times 7 equals 14. Now, what if I took a number like 14 and try to divide it by 0? Then what would that equal? Well, it would equal question mark. 
And what's the property of question mark? Well, question mark times 0 has to equal 14. But wait a minute. I just told you that anything times 0 is 0. So there is no question mark that I can multiply by 0 to get 14. You can't divide by 0. This is a big no-no. So you can't take any number at all and divide it by 0. We will not hear of it. You are breaking the laws of algebra. So as long as you avoid that, you can do whatever you want. But there'll be no dividing by 0. Multiplying by 0, great. Dividing by 0, you're going to get the claw. Scared? I would be. I'll see you at the next lecture.